Welcome, or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is that this is another in my confession series of Brexit broke my low buy. And not only did it break my low buy, it confused me so much. I bought a pastel palette. Yeah, me. Pastel palette. Oh dear. So, if you want to see exactly how this palette performs, then you're in exactly the right place. Because here comes the tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, continuing with my Brexit broke my low buy theme. Oh boy, this is going to be a bit of a series. And you know I said I did the German order and then a revolution order. Yeah, what I didn't realise was that the next morning I did two more orders. This is a problem that I had with my insomnia last year. I'd make an order when half asleep and only realised I'd made an order when I either got the email through or the items arrived. I will have shown you this in the intro, no doubt. So I ordered this as well. Mm. Oh, and um, I ordered myself the correct shade in the number seven foundation because I was using Cool Ivory. Let's come back some of the lights don't wash out. I was using Cool Ivory. I've now got porcelain. This was 33% um, off though, it was down from 15 quid to a tenner, so kind of, kind of sort of trying to justify it. I just broke my low buy. I need to um, hammer myself back in again. So this is the palette. It has got a lovely big mirror, as you can see, and... It's a pastel palette. Do you ever think I'd buy a pastel palette? Nah, me neither. Right. Um, I have done swatches of this. I will um, put that up on screen while I'm zooming in and talking you through the usual housekeeping that I mentioned on my channel. <clears throat> um, oh, actually, these have got names. I could talk you through the names, couldn't I? Right, housekeeping. Um, I zoom in really close. I do real-time blending. Um, I talk you through one eye and then do the same thing on the other eye. Nothing. The only things done off-camera are things like mascara. That you, you know how to do mascara. Um, but the whole tutorial is done real-time without cutting anything out. This is so absolute beginners can follow my tutorial as easily as experts. Because of my chronic pain, I, I can't blend as quick as most people do. Um, and regularly have to stop, but then I normally have a chat to you while I stopped. Or I'm explaining what I'm going to do next. If you're an expert and you find that a little bit too slow for you, by all means speed me up. There's a YouTube speed widget, please feel free to use it. Right, swatches. So, top row, from wrist to elbow, or left to right, is Daydream Cloud Mystical Ambition, Silver Lining Fantasy Skylight and Bubble. 
and Daydream, Mystical, Fantasy and Bubble are all pressed pigments so they may stain your eye. Second row, Imagine, Sunshine, Dreamy which is a pressed pigment, Aspiration which is a pressed pigment, Stargaze, Visualise, Clarity which is a pressed pigment and Wishes and Hello and I need to be a little bit closer in don't I? Right, um, I also picked up, with the Revolution Conceal and Define, I've got two colours. I've got the C0.1, which I use for blemishes on my face, etc. And then C0.5, which I normally use for either um, priming my lids or... Sometimes I use it on my under eyes if I'm particularly dark circled, but that can just look a little bit too light. So Revolution have now bought out these, um, this again was in the order, colour correctors. And this is the one they recommended for dark circles on pale or fair, fair to light skin, and it's the peach one. Now, I've got to be honest, if I hold that peach one next to shade C1, my initial thought, this is the peach, this is the C1, my initial reaction was, oh, holy heck, that's going to be way too deep. And there's the 0.5. You can see the 0.5 has got a pinky tone to it. So my initial reaction is, oh, that's going to look terrible. But I thought I'd give it a go which is why I've not done anything with my eyes yet. Face is washed, uh, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Now in terms of primer, because I'd spent 20 quid, they do an offer at the moment where if you buy from the Revolution website, they send you a choice of your skincare sample. And I went for this one, which is the Super Fruit Extract. Um, apparently it's got blueberry extract to help fight environmental damage. Doing one serum and primer leaves skin soft, helps makeup last longer and creates an unbeatable glow. It has got a slight iridescence to it. Uh, but then over that I obviously went in with my usual antiperspirant primer, otherwise my foundation won't stay on. So, that's normal with me. If I'm going to use a second primer, I always put it underneath my antiperspirant one. Otherwise it tends to pill up. So, I'll just see whether that makes any difference to my skin. So this is the peach... Colour corrector. Lord, that does look deep. But then, to be fair, side of my dark circles today. I'm struggling with um, insomnia with, with pain at the moment, which is pretty standard when the weather starts changing. So, I'm going to go in with my actually a foundation, it's double ended foundation and concealer ended but I tend to go in with the foundation end initially you can of course use your fingers if you want but um, obviously with my fingers with these nails it's not always the wisest of things to do, actually that's not as dark as I was expecting it to be and I think actually that has made a difference hmm okay maybe revolution do know what they're talking about after all I would have if I'd looked at that in the store rather than just ordering it online I really would have dismissed it as being too dark but apparently not. Obviously with colour correctors you tend to put them on underneath your foundation and then once your foundation's on you then decide whether you still need concealer over the top so that that really has surprised me. Wow. Um, Alright then. Right, I'm just going to clean my brush off on my washcloth. 
<clears throat> and then I'm going to grab 0.5. This is how I um, prime my lids most days. I just bung some of it on like that. And then get my brush. Yes, I'm blind in this side, but I, I rely on muscle memory at this point rather than actually looking in the mirror when I'm doing that bit. As you can see, because I was completely out of camera. So for those of you who were wanting to know how I prime my lids, because I normally do that before I come on camera just to save a little bit of time. Because I'm aware that my films are longer than most people's because I talk you through each stage. I do real time blending etc. But I did have a question from someone about could I please show on at least one of my films how I do my base. And that's literally how I do it. If I then wanted to set it I would now set it with Coty Airspun. But because this is a pastel palette and I want to give the colours as best a chance as possible of showing up, I'm not going to set my base today. Right, <clears throat> when I have my eyes open, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have a hooded lid. Again, if you're used to hearing me say this, it doesn't apply to you, feel free to skip forward until you see me putting colour on. If you don't see all of this, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. When I start to put colour down, I follow my natural socket. All you need to do with your eye open, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and just mark out where you need your crease to fall. Okay, so you're effectively, if you if you imagine that you couldn't see my mobile lid here, I would then make my crease line there. Now if I show you with this eye, because this is one that I'm blind in, so I can actually close it. If I cover my lid with this um, handle and then close it, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in, so I do totally understand the issues that people with hooded lids face. Uh, you can still follow my tutorials though. All you need to do is adjust the type of brush that you use. Alright, just trying to find an appropriately sized one. Why is it you can never find the brush you look there it is. Right, so, if I'm using a big old fluffy brush like this, you need to use a more tapered one like this. If I'm using a tapered brush like this, you need to use one that comes up to a point. So like a, this is actually a Coastal Sense um, to, uh, tapered crease brush. That's the words I'm groping in my mind for. And that still had tissue on the end of it from when I dried it off, which is really helpful. Right, so let's get started and start putting some colour onto my eyes. And I want to use as many of these as I can, really. I'm going to start off with um, quite a... a a, a, a narrow brush. If I start off with this, you need to start off with something more like this that comes up to a point, okay? Um, or you can use something like this, which still has a bit of movement to it for blending, but comes up to a very, very tight point, as you could see. So I'm going to start off with Sunshine, which is the yellow. Okay, tapping that brush in 
there is a fair amount of kick up in the pan, I don't know if you can actually see that. That doesn't worry me because all I do is just pick it up next time round. Uh, now I'm going to start off in the inner corner here and start literally just tapping this in because obviously it's not a set base so we can't start off with our windscreen wipers that we would normally do. So I'm just tapping this into the crease and then looking straight ahead making sure I can still see it when I bring it up the eye. Okay. So I'm just tapping that into place like so. Once I've got it all in where I want it, I'm just going to try a very, very gentle circular buffing movement just to ensure we've got an even blend across the eye. And that will then highlight any areas where you need to add a bit more colour. If you do find that you've got areas, because I do have some areas on my eyes that don't like taking colour <clears throat> because of deep creasing, like here and here for example, um, just once you've finished buffing, just add some more pigment onto your brush, very gently tap to blend it out. Okay. Hmm. Now I'm going to repeat that over here. So again, initially going right on the crease line. Now because I have very deep creasing here I do have to stretch my lid out slightly. Don't do this unless you absolutely have to otherwise you will cause yourself to have horrific deep creasing like I have got. That was from when my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was five, so nearly 40 years ago. And that's the kind of damage that happens. I don't know why, but it's looking brighter on this side than the other one. That happens sometimes. Although to be fair, I haven't finished blending this side yet, have I? a wee bit extra to this side. That's the thing, just keep sitting back and looking at both eyes and making sure that they match. Now you might have to do a different shape for one eye than the other, because obviously, <clears throat> sorry I've still got this cough. Uh, I think it's hay fever related, either that or it's um, asthma from when I had pneumonia a couple of years ago on my birthday. That was fun, I tell you. Turning 43 was not fun for me. In bed with pneumonia, looking as my brother-in-law described me, rather zombie-ish, because I was grey and I matched the walls. So, yeah. Right, so I'm going to clean the yellow off of this brush. I'm still using the same brush. I'm going to go in with Skylight. Now I've not used any of the pressed pigments yet. These are just the eyeshadows that I'm going in with at the moment. Skylight's this beautiful teal. I'm just going to I never so slightly overlap the yellow with it. This one doesn't seem to have as much kick up as the yellow did, so it's obviously pressed slightly more firmly in the pan. Again, I'm just gently tapping and patting the colour into place. 
and then a tiny bit of blending. Again, if you do end up blending some of the pigment away, just pick some more back up and pat it back on. You do sometimes get that when you've got the non-set base because obviously it tends to cling to the shadows so then when you try and blend it just either doesn't move or it blends right off your eye. Starting to feel like a tutti frutti again. And I'm going to do the same with this eye. Again, slightly overlapping the yellow. These are actually, for pastel shadows, they're actually performing better than I was expecting. I was expecting to be here all morning trying to build up the colour, but I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised. Again, a little bit of light blending, and then rebuilding any pigment that I feel requires it. I'm not overly worried about getting it on the lid here because I'm going to cut the crease today. Again, just sit back and double check that they both look the same sort of depth of colour. Then I'm going to take this skylight off of the <coughs> brush and I'm going to dip back into sunshine, which is the yellow. I'm going to very lightly just blend where the two colours meet. So I'm using the yellow to blend into that teal. See, that just softens the line up. Obviously, you're going to have to go back in and clean your brush because you will have picked some teal up on it. Looks like the teal is going to stain. Never mind. So, pick up a little bit of the sunshine again. And do the same this side. Just really, really lightly blend. I'm holding the brush right at the very end. So I'm putting as little pressure on my eyes as possible. And as usual I've left a bit of a gap between the colour and the brow, but I am going to be going over that shortly anyway. And blending out that top edge. <clears throat> I'm going to go into Aspiration, and this is one of the pressed pigments. Yeah, this has got a lot more kick up in pan than the others. I'm just going to add this to the outer edge, because you know me and purples and lilacs, it's got to be used eventually. Now I do always struggle at the top here to get any pigment to lay down, as regular viewers will no doubt know. So I'm just holding the brush a little closer up just to have a little bit more control over. And that's the husband ringing, hold on. Always manages to ring when I'm filming, love him. I've just picked up some more on the brush here but I haven't actually applied it to my skin yet. So, continuing to... 
this is taking a little bit more work to build up which is surprising because normally pigments have by virtue of being a pressed pigment they normally have more colour molecules in it but then perhaps this is just a very very light I mean, it, it looks like in the pan it looks like it should be darker than yeah than the, the teal that I was using um, but actually on my eye it's coming up a bit lighter than the pan actually shows again just gentle buffing on the edge of that blue just to to blend it in yep, I like that now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side again overlapping the teal slightly just to build that colour up two colours meet. Now you can see I've not actually tapped my brush off at any point yet but there doesn't appear to be any major fallout from it so that's good. Because being a pastel palette if you tapped off you really struggle with how long it takes to build these colours up because obviously pastels by virtue of their name are much lighter and I, I I don't know how well these would show up on darker skin tones. Um, I guess if you had a light base underneath them, you may be able to get some result with them. Um, but again, I think the super deep skin tones would struggle with a lot of this palette. that brush off. That was brush number nine by the way from the AliExpress set. Uh, I think I've now got the which brushes I recommend film. I think I've added that to my standard uploads uh, in the description box so you can always go to that film and get the link for this set. But I got 12 brushes for like I think it was £2.60 or something and they're really really good. Uh, this is number six from that set, which is the tapered blending. And I'm going to go into Imagine, which is the the white or cream matte. And what I'm going to do is very gently use that to blend out the top. of the eyeshadows because you know I normally like to have sort of like a four or five mil gap here so that when I put my brow highlight on just there it shows up I just went a little bit too high with it this time so I'm just gonna tap a bit of this white on and then use it to Soften the edge of those shadows just so they're not so harsh. And yes, this brush is stained. Greens and purples and reds will do that to your brushes, unfortunately. That's why a lot of brushes you tend to find have black bristles to them. So you can see that just softens that top edge slightly. I'm going to do the same on this side. Now tap the white on, give it a blend. Again, obviously, if you are 
if this white is going to show up against your skin, you might prefer to use whatever shade um, translucent powder or setting powder you use that's closer to your skin tone. Um, but again, as I said, I don't think that the super deep skin tones are going to be able to get much out of this palette, to be honest. Um, simply because they are very, very light shadows. I mean, I'm like, I'm pale as a pint of milk and even I'm sort of looking at them thinking, mm, they're nice, but they're very pastel. But then I bought a pastel palette, so what do I expect? <clears throat> as I said, pain and insomnia at two in the morning, it's got a lot to answer for. It's one of the reasons I did my low buy, because I wanted to stop myself from doing that. So, clean that brush out, and then I'm going to grab, initially, this, um, oh, don't you hate it when your brushes keep falling over, will you stay put? This is a, it's not a pencil brush because it still has movement to it, but it's a very, very small, fine brush because I just want to add some depth through here and in this outer corner and obviously I'm going to need to mark it with my eye open because if I'm going to be cutting the crease I'm going to lose quite a bit of the depth otherwise. So I think I'm going to go in with um, let's go in with Ambition As you can see, picks up beautifully. I'm just gonna initially pop that. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. In the outer corner here. And again, I'm just patting it into place because it's still on an unset base. Don't forget. And then with my eye open, I'm just gonna sketch just above my it's weird because this brush is tickling my lashes just above when it's open you can see I've got a crap ton on the lid and I really don't care about that because as I said I'm going to be blending that out in a minute anyway so just going to deepen and straighten that line up slightly. And just really gently blend along it. I'm doing the tiniest, tiniest little movements possible because I don't really want to thicken the line up. I'm just trying to blend the edges out a little bit. And then again, blending down into this corner. I know it looks a mess, but trust me, if you get a fallout, you can just dust it off like that. As I said, I've not done my base yet, so it doesn't really matter if I get fallout or not. Oh, for goodness sake, now everything's blasted well for me. Oh, right. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this eye. I always get more fallout on this eye because it is more creased, it is a looser lid than this one. Um, you know, I'm very nearly 45, I'm about four, week, four or five weeks away from being 45. Um, and I've lost about 10 stone in the last few years. 
So, just get on my eyelids moves. So again, with my eye open, just going to mark just above. Like so. Because I want that blue to actually be seen and I know when I cut my lid it's going to disappear if I don't put it. Because if I just put that in the crease, you'll see in a minute when I cut my lid that it will just disappear. And I kind of wanted a little bit of it to show, hence why I've uh, taken it up the lid. Obviously, if you haven't got deep set eyes, you can just follow through your natural crease. But if you've got deep set eyes or hooded lids, then, you know. If you want the blue to show, you're going to have to do it that way, unfortunately. Right. Clean that brush off. The problem is these bloody Jeffree Star ones keep getting in the way. Right, now these are nail art acrylic brushes. And I get these because you can see how thin they go when you press the things together. This is a number 12. So, I'm going to get my C.05 concealer. I'm like, why isn't that buffing away? And I just thought, oh yeah, I put that peach stuff down, didn't I? <laughs> right, so, get the concealer. Some onto this and just quite crudely and roughly just bug it on my lid like so. Then when I open my eye and blink a few times, you can see it shows me exactly how high. I need to go to cut my crease and that was why I did the blue further up so I'm just gonna follow that line across and then basically fill it in And you can feel the concealer starting to get a bit sticky as you're going over it. You can sort of, as you then start tapping it out, you can kind of feel a minute sort of sticky tackiness as you're going out across the lid and you can see this is why I wasn't worried about getting it all over the lid now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it round to the side that doesn't have concealer on it <clears throat> I'm just going to gently tap that all over area that we've laid the concealer down on to pick up any excess and I'm going to just quickly wipe that brush off because I tend to do one eye at a time otherwise the lid can not be sticky enough when you go to pop the uh, next colour on so So 
So I'm going to start off with this one, which is quite a firm, but um, still has movement to it. And you can see it's it's kind of a flat packer style brush. Um, I'm going to start off by going into cloud. I'm just going to press that completely dry onto the concealer. You can wet them if you want. Um, but this is actually going on quite nicely without needing to be wet because the problem with wetting your brush when you do this is you can actually kind of water down the concealer you can do this with your finger if you want but again nails and you're eventually going to have to go in with a brush at the edges anyway to get it accurate I'm taking that to about there my brush that's helpful clean the brush off and then I'm going to go into silver lining which is an icy blue as you can see Add this to the middle of the eye. Very gently dragging it across onto the white and then dragging the white back across onto it just to Blend that edge there nicely so there's no harsh edge where the two colours meet. Clean off the brush again. And I'm going to go into a mystical which is a pressed pigment. concealer and then flipping it over I'm just going to drag the blue and the lilac together just like we did with the white to soften it and then I'm just going to ever so gently smudge off of the concealer onto the blue that we put into the outer corner there. You can see it has removed some of the blue, but it's really not a problem because we can just grab a brush. Blue back in, do 
open the corner back up a little bit. And again, just blend over where we bought it off of the concealer. Just so we've got a little tiny bit of that shimmer showing through under the blue. Hmm. Like that. Like that a lot. So, <clears throat> I'm now going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye. So we start off with concealer and our nail art brush. And we just initially whack it quite haphazardly and quite thick on the lid and then blink a few times and we have got the indication of where we need our cut crease line to be it really is such a simple way of doing it and then <clears throat> because of course everybody's eye shape is different you get the correct shape for your eye. You also occasionally get concealer on your lashes, which is great fun. She said with sarcasm, and then goes and puts more on. Honestly. I think I have more on, to be honest. Right. So again, I'm just patting this concealer out. Get a nice, even layer. I am going to gently stretch the lid out just to make sure it's gone into those deep creases there. dominoes with all my lipsticks I've got here, that's helpful. Flip it over to the side that hasn't got any concealer on and just pat it over the whole area to pick up any excess concealer which you can see it has indeed done. So, clean off the acrylic brush. I always wipe any creams and stuff off of brushes immediately that I've used them. Because um, it just makes it so much easier when you do the deep clean, basically. Uh, but it also uh, means that if you want to use them again the next day, you can do without any cross-contamination of the previous day's colour. So... Where did I go to? About there, wasn't it? With the white. Now, I'm just going to gently stretch this out. Just to make sure I've got it in all of the creases. Because if I don't do this, what happens during the day is as I blink, if I haven't done that, the, the shimmer sits on top of the crease. And as obviously I move my eye through the day, I suddenly find I get showers of shimmer coming down. Which then means I get multicoloured, shiny freckles. <coughs> which if that's your thing, then you know, more power to your elbow. But um, it's not really the look I'm going for. Got enough of my own freckles, thank you, without only adding any more. Let's clean the white off and then I'm going into silver lining, which is the blue. And I'm adding a strip of that blue. As I said, you can, if you want, spray the brush. But as you can see, when you put it on a wet 
or tacky concealer. It actually goes on with quite a shimmer anyway. And I, I think highly foiled lids would look a bit odd with a pastel. Um, you know, sort of eye look, to be honest. That's just me though, if you want to spray your brush and foil your shade, then you, you know, not foil the shade, apply the shade wet, I'm falling into the own, my own trap there. I hate when people say that, but it's just, foiling a shade is when you mix the shade in a, like a little bowl or receptacle <clears throat> with a mixing medium and make it like a liquid to apply rather than just applying the shadow wet. Again, just take that off the edge of the concealer just a little bit. Just soften up that edge. A little bit of the blue, the icy blue that is, to mix that side, and then pick up some of the ambition, just to re-emphasise the colour on the outer corner. And gently go over the edge of the lilac. Really sorry if you can hear the neighbours knocking on the wall again. Lord knows what they're doing, they're always knocking and banging and... Okay. Right, I'm now going to go off camera and pop some foundation and whatnot on and I'll be back to finish the eye look under here. Balls. I'm also going to pick that up off the floor. <coughs> See you, well, for you it's going to be instant. Okay, I'm back. And yeah, I think I, I did use less concealer today after using that peach one, but hmm, we'll see. Right, I am going to grab this nice flat topped brush and I'm going to go in with... I'm going to go in with Bubble, which is actually um, a pressed pigment, so this could stain. So I'm just going to tap off and make sure I don't get any fallout from this. I'm just going to pop this right up tight under my bottom lashes. This is a lovely colour. Ooh, I need to do myself another look with this colour, I think. You know what I'm like, I open a palette and just go for whatever calls me at that specific time. I always flinch this side in case I poke myself in the eye. Because obviously I can't really tell how close the brush is getting, I'm relying on muscle memory and my viewfinder to make sure I don't actually poke myself in the eyeball. Not always successful. Right, then I've got another brush here. Very similar shape. So flat top, but much thicker. And I'm going to pick up Dreamy. Which again is a pressed pigment. And tap off. I've only got a little bit on there. I'm just going to gently buff that 
Now I know a lot of people don't like using pinks under their eye because it can, depending on how you do it, make you look a bit ill. But, you know me, I'm always on for breaking rules. So, and I just wanted to mimic the lilac up here because obviously I picked up the blues and now I wanted to pick up the lilac because there isn't really a deeper version of the yellow that I can use anywhere. So I wanted to go down a purpley route, purpley pink route. I like that. I like that a lot. Right. Uh, looking at the shimmers in here, I've used all the lightest ones, so I can't really use those for in a corner highlight. So I am grabbing my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut, which is one heck of a highlight. This is just a cheap brush I got off of eBay years ago. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this under the tail end of my brow bone there. This is a very spring-like look, this pastel one, it's quite, it's unusual for me but I quite like it. And I'm just going to pop that on the inner corner and I like to continue it just under the tear duct just to meet up with colour I've run under my eyes. I just find with my particular eye shape that's the most flattering way to highlight my inner corner because I've got quite I've got the large sort of almond shaped eyes and this just sort of really emphasizes their shape. But obviously you do whatever suits you best. Right, I'm going to go off camera and do mascara and stick some highlighter on the rest of my face and do a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back for my first impression final thoughts. Please don't go anywhere. And I'm back. Um, just so that you know what I've used everywhere because I'm terrible at telling you this. Uh, I use my Winky Lux Latte Bronzer, which smells like freshly ground espresso. Lovely. Uh, I use the Revolution Vivid Baked Blush in Bang Bang You're Dead. There's also my broken Brexit low buy thing purchase. Highlight, as I showed you, was my Ofra Nikki Tutorials. Mascara is Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara. Um, and setting spray today was my Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day in Watermelon. So, what are my thoughts so far on this particular palette. Well first off I'm surprised I ever bought a pastel palette. I clearly was having some kind of midnight crisis. Um, that being said I'm actually really quite impressed with how it's performed. I was not expecting to get or I, was, I thought I was going to have to work a lot harder to get this depth of colour. Um, I'm also going to try it on um, my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, but obviously that is slightly yellow toned, so I don't know um, whether that will actually reflect through these shadows or not. But I am going to try these, because you know, I, even when I do a first impression, I then use it 
when I'm not filming a number of times and if I've got further thoughts on it that are different to my initial first impressions then I'll make a point of using it again and telling you what my revised thoughts are. Um, so far I really quite like this. Um, I mean I used what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of those shadows so far. So I've used half of the palette basically. Um, and I actually think this is quite a sweet look. This would be a great um, starter palette. If you've got, like for example, my um, my eldest goddaughter, I got her this particular palette as part of her Christmas present. This would be a great companion palette for her for this because then she can add a pop of colour or if she's feeling brave and feeling adventurous then she can do something like this but you know it is it, it, it'll, it'll although it's a good standalone palette it'll also be a very good companion palette if you are starting to get into colour or you want to try and use more colour um, with it being pastel it's more forgiving, it's not such a sudden, oh my goodness, I've got colour on my eyelids. Um, so it's, it's kind of a gentle way to ease yourself into using colour. And as I said, initially you can just use it as pops of colour until you've built your courage up. And, and you know, Or just do like I do, just sit down, open it up and think, which colours do I like the look of today? And just bung them on, because the beauty of makeup is, if you don't like it, you can take it off and start again. You know, you're not all filming it like I am. Um, I mean, there's times you've seen me start a look and then go, no, I don't like this, take it off and start again, either with a different base or starting with a different um, method of applying the shadows or a different brush. So, so this was a tenner, which I think is actually a pretty good price. These are all, um, as with all the Obsession palettes, these are magnetic. And they have the little notches here so you can actually flick them out easily enough. So, you know, if you're heading away for a weekend, for example, you could grab yourself a small magnetic palette. Um, I've got one over there somewhere. Where is it? You could grab yourself a small magnetic palette like this and just put your favourite shadows in with, you know, a couple of more neutral shades and build your own custom palette. Um, I am going to continue to play with this and see what other looks I can get out of it. Um, I might see how dark a look I can get or how bright a look I can get out of it because there's not really any dark shadows in here but you know I might try you know coming down this row here um, and just seeing you know maybe with those five shadows just seeing what I can produce. Um, if there are any specific colour combinations you want to see me try with this, please let me know in the comments box below. That's what it's there for. Um, yeah, so far I'd say this is a pretty good buy. It's a really weighty palette as well. How much do you get in each of these? Um, 0.046 ounces. So when you think that not the new Urban Decays, but the old Urban Decay shadows were 0 0.05, so this is just under that. Um, but to be honest, how many times have you panned an eyeshadow? I've done it twice, I think. Once with my Modern Renaissance and once with the Revolution Original Neutrals versus Neutrals, but that's when that was the only two palettes I had. So, yeah, I, you know, I don't see any reason to not recommend you buying this. I really quite like it. So, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, as I said, if there are any other colour combinations that you would like to see me do, let me know in the comments box below. What do you think of this look? Is it? Uh, it's a bit of a shock. I did a more neutral look on the first one of my Brexit Broke My Low Bars and now I've done a pastel one. Who am I? What's going on? Who... 
We'll have a bright one again soon, I promise. Or a dark one or something. I'll do something more like me soon. Right, okay. Um, if you can do all the usual, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, when you ring the bell, make sure you choose all notifications. Um, do double check that you are still subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people even when they're watching all of my films and commenting on a lot of them. Um, people are still getting unsubscribed from the channel, so do please check that. Uh, once you finish watching mine, there are an awful lot in the playlist to watch. You could watch the other Brexit episodes and see which other palettes I bought when I broke my low buy. Or if you want to see something more like my usual sort of uh, bright, colourful, energetic, extravagant, fabulous looks. Uh, there's, I think I've got over 170 some odd films that are uploaded now, so I'm sure you're going to find at least one of them that will interest you. Once you finish watching all of mine, the girlies from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group are as ever listed in my description box below and they will be delighted to welcome you to their channels. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.